42 people confirmed dead from Cyclone Winston in Fiji. Remember, this was forecast. People knew it was coming. They took shelter. But for 42 people, there wasn't enough shelter in their villages or on their islands to withstand winds that were that powerful. We begin tonight with what it was like in the storm and what it is like now in the crowded shelters four days on. This is Marama Dunn, who lives with her extended family, including elderly parents in Rakiraki, and who was there when the cyclone hit. It was really terrifying. I mean, I mean nobody would want to live through this event to go through what we went through. Uh, and actually living through it was just an experience of a lifetime. You you will never just go away that easily, As, especially knowing that uh, your children are the ones that are involved in it also. What happened to your home? Uh, it just got, uh, just all got blown off the rooftop. Uh, we had to run underneath the house and stay in the... Uh, uh, to just go in the wet, uh, in the mud and everything. We had to just crawl underneath the house so that we can just keep the children safe. Hearing all the wind just uh, blowing around you, it was really terrifying. We just didn't know maybe the whole house could collapse on you again, even if you're underneath the house. But that was the safest place for us to be. And uh, talking about it is, uh, I'm sorry, quite hard to just, you know, to relive the whole event again. Talk about it over phone. Yeah, I, I can understand that entirely. Where are you now, Marama? Where are you talking to me from? I'm at the evacuation centre in Rakiraki. I'm at the evacuation centre in Rakiraki. It's uh, Penang High School. The high school in Rakiraki. We were fortunate enough to have been brought by the police and the fire department. They brought us over here to just take shelter here. And Marama, I understand that the evacuation centres are very, very crowded. Is that what it's yes, like it there? Is. Yes, it is very crowded. And they are people like you who have lost their homes, who have lost everything yes, and have nowhere else to go. Everything. And nowhere else to go. Villages, uh, people who, li who live off the land, that have just come out from their villages. They even have nowhere, uh, no trans transport to go home because they were stuck here. And they don't even know if half of their families are alive or not. And because there's no other means of communication, we've tried through cell phones, we've tried everything even to get some uh, solar energy things so that we can charge our phones to call, but there's no network. What is your village like now? Have, is the entire village destroyed? Um, there's a village here in Rakiraki. It has only three homes standing where I live. I, I, the area that I live in, all the homes were destroyed. Nothing's left. Madam, I'm so sorry. What, what, what are you going to do now? What will you do now? How can you start again? We're just trying to hold hands together with everybody that is around here and just, just help one another rebuild our lives again because we cannot rely on the government because there's so much damage done. And uh, I know they have, uh, I don't know what their contingency plan or whatever their plans they have, but I told them we just have to hold hands together for all of this to get this, uh, so that we can just help one another out of this situation.